Mr. President, thank you for speaking with Channel 10. Yes, sir. First of all, congratulations on your daughter's <laughs> wedding this weekend. <laughs> thank you. It was, um, as my uh, Jewish friends tell me, it was mazel tov, and it was, uh, it was a beautiful experience. It was uh, very emotional, and it was uh, to see your little girl, Merrick, a good guy, and, and Laura and I were th thrilled. Made you proud. Yeah, I was very proud of her. It was a wonderful time. And we did it on a ranch, which was, we didn't do it here in the White House because uh, Jenna wanted a more low key, um, kind of homey environment. And she loves the ranch, and so do we. So it was perfect. It was wonderful. Thanks for asking. Great. Now to business. Yes. <laughs> Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert just said a couple of days ago that uh, he would resign if he was indicted with some new uh, corruption charges. Mm -hmm. Does that change in any way your uh, strategy in the peace process in the Middle East? No. The vision of the peace process is still is the same. I mean, I, I have come to the conclusion that, uh, that it is essential for Israel to have a Palestinian partner that is a democracy committed to peace. I fully understand not all Palestinians agree with that vision, but I, am, I also believe over time that when confronted with life in Gaza, what that's like, or life in a, you know, in a place where you can raise your child in peace, most of the Palestinians will choose peace. And that the best way to marginalize these radicals who murder the innocent to achieve their political objectives is through Palestinian democracy. And you can do that with Olmert and Abbas? Well, uh, the Prime Minister's, uh, as I understand, the legal issue goes on, and I fully understand that, respect Israeli rule of law. I will just tell you, in my, my, I have great relations with the Prime Minister. I find him to be a, a frank man, an honest man, an open man, a guy easy to talk to, and uh, somebody who has, understands the vision that necessary for, for Israeli security. And uh, so we, we will continue working hard, and I do believe we can get a state to find by the end of my presidency. A state won't exist until certain obligations are met by everybody, but have it defined is very important. So that's the goal by the end of the year, uh, define what borders of, of Palestine Well, that and refugee issue as well as, uh, you know, the other key security issues that are necessary for the a state to come into being. But the roadmap has obligations for all parties. And uh, so my goal is to get the state defined. Look, uh, <laughs> I firmly believe that, first of all, you know, I supported the Sharon move on Gaza, and I still think it was the right move, uh, and that I supported the elections, because there needs to be clarity. Everybody's got to see the truth, and the truth is that Hamas, you know, can't deliver promise, promises for the Palestinian people. And the truth is, is that, you know, if there's an opportunity now to offer a different vision from theirs. Their vision is destroy Israel. How about a vision that says we want to coexist with Israel so we can raise our children in peace? Now, they, I'm sure people say, oh, Bush, man, he sounds hopelessly idealistic. But the truth of the matter is, in order for peace to secure, it's that kind of is idealism that has got to prevail. Mr. President, you have said that the bombing of the Syrian North Korean facility by Israel sent a message to Iran. What was the message? You are next. Uh, no, it's just that people are going to take care of their security needs. And the message to Iran is that, uh, is that, you know, your desire to have a nuclear weapon, coupled with your statements about the destruction of our close ally, uh, has and I made it abundantly clear to everybody that we have got to work together to stop you from having a nuclear weapon. I mean, it, it's, it's, to me, it's the it's the single biggest threat to peace in the Middle East is the Iranian regime. Not only because they desire to have the technologies to build a weapon, uh, the technologies necessary to build a weapon, but it's also to their funding of Hezbollah. Look what's happening in Lebanon now, a young democracy trying to survive. By the way, it's in Israel's interest that the Lebanese democracy survive. Mm -hmm. So what's going to stop them? Well, pressure, sanctions, diplomacy, all options on the table. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're trying to destabilize the young Iraqi democracy. Mm -hmm. no, and what stops, them, what stops them there is when we catch them moving their weapons in, they're brought to justice. That's what stops them. Many Israelis think that the only thing that would stop them would be a military attack. Uh, have you considered that? I've always told people that all options are on the table. 
I've also learned that in my seven and a half years as president, it's probably best not to be talking about the specifics of any option. If Israel does that, would you understand? You're, you're, you're becoming very hypothetical, uh, hypothetical in your questions. I fully understand Israel's concerns about Iran. That's going to be my message when I come to Israel. Uh, and that is that uh, you, you need to be concerned about Iran. And you are concerned about Iran, and so are we. And part of our job is to, is to you know, look, we want to saw any, 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 anything. I mean, stopping them enriching is, you know, the first choice is to uh, do it diplomatically, of course. And that's why we're working on the sanction regime, and that's why we're trying to affect their money flows. But it's hard, because not everybody shares the same anxiety as Israel and the United States does. And, uh, but it's a tough issue, and I fully understand it, and I will continue to pressure as best I can. Mr. President, did you get any official requests to pardon Jonathan Pollard? And if yes, would you consider it? And you know, many people in Israel think that the arrest of uh, Ben Amikadish in another spy case was yeah. intended to influence you. Yeah, of course. You know, we, 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 we are constantly analyzing cases. There's been no change in, in, in the government's attitude at this point. So, no change. What is your. Did you get such a request from Israel? Oh, yeah, constantly. Constantly. Sure. So, so far. 60th birthday, any, any new uh, presents? We, uh, we'll analyze every request, but there's, there's been no change of attitude. Um, Mr. President, it took like seven years before you got involved in the Middle East. Uh, I no, wonder... No, that's not an accurate statement. No, not? Please. Uh, well, in, Isra in the Israeli-Palestinian peace no, process... No, that is an inaccurate statement, too, but anyway, go ahead. I'll let you finish your question. Would you recommend the next <laughs> president to start earlier? Look, I inherited... Uh, when I came in office, there was an intifada. It's hard to in the middle of uh, intifada to be talking peace. I mean, you had people scrambling for their security. But I gave a speech in June 2002, remember I was sworn in in 2001, which really helped define the two-state solution. It talked about who we would or not deal with. Uh, I've been, I know we've been very much engaged in, in terms of setting the conditions. Remember the roadmap was done during my time? Um, anyway, no, we've been very much involved in the Middle East. It's an, it's a, and should the next president start early? Like me? You're not the next president. No, no, no. You mean started early like I did? Sure, yeah. No, you can't okay. help it. Look, this is the... One of the accomplishments or one of the interesting things that's happened in this administration is we have placed American foreign policy, uh, a top priority of our foreign policy, squarely in the Middle East. We got Iraq. We got Lebanon. We got Iran. And, of course, we got the Middle Eastern, uh, you know, the, the, the peace process between the Palestinians and Israelis, which, frankly, is... Moving down the road pretty good. And I hope during my time, you know, before it's over, we get the vision defined. But it's, uh, I think any American president is going to be committed to Israel's existence and understand the realities and threats in the Middle East. Finally, Mr. President, you are coming to Israel for your second visit as President of the United States. What do you expect <laughs> from this visit? I expect a chance to speak in the Knesset, which I'm excited about and I'm thankful. And I'm looking forward to telling people that uh, I fully understand that the the nature of the world, and that there are ideologues who murder innocent people to achieve their political objectives, and we must, do, uh, we must stand strong against those ideologues. And we must, uh, on the one hand, be uh, you know, strong in our security measures, and on the other hand, offer a competing vision. And that's what I'm going to talk about. It's a hopeful speech, it's an optimistic speech, and it's one that I hope uh, you know, assures Israel, Israelis that during the Bush administration and the subsequent administrations, they'll have a strong friend and ally in the United States of America. Mr. President, we wish you a pleasant trip to Israel. Thank I'm you looking very much. forward to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for this interview. Yeah, thanks. Thank Good you. to see you guys.